the presidential candidate's hypocrisy of pro-life. The election is getting closer and closer, the rhetoric is intensifying, the empty promises are getting louder and bolder, and the smoke and mirrors and bamboozling is getting more sophisticated. We have to be able to recognize a tree by its fruit. In other words, a person's character or success can be judged by what they produce or do. The term pro-life has become a rallying cry for a particular political ideology, often associated with conservative religious groups. However, a closer examination of the actions and policies advocated by many who claim to be pro-life reveals a significant disconnect between their stated beliefs and their actual practices. In this presentation, we'll argue that those who champion Pro-life. Slogans without addressing the root causes of human suffering and inequality are, in fact, not truly pro-life. True pro-life advocates should be concerned with the preservation and protection of human life at every stage, from conception to natural death. This requires a holistic approach that addresses not only the issue of abortion but also the broader social and economic factors that can lead to the loss of life or diminish its quality. Unfortunately, Many who claim to be pro-life have a narrow focus on abortion and fail to recognize the interconnectedness of various issues that impact human flourishing. Folks, here are some specific examples of policies or actions taken by pro-life. Advocates that contradict their stated beliefs. Economic policies. Tax cuts for the wealthy. Many pro-life. Advocates support tax cuts for the wealthy, which disproportionately benefit those who are already financially secure. This can exacerbate income inequality and lead to increased poverty and economic hardship, which can have negative consequences for families and individuals. Huge tax cuts and unrealistic tax incentives for corporations. Deregulation of corporations. Pro-life. Advocates often support the deregulation of corporations, which can lead to increased corporate power and reduced worker protections. This can result in lower wages, job insecurity, and limited access to healthcare, which can have a negative impact on the health and well being of individuals and families. Social policies, opposition to Affordable Care Act, some pro life advocates have opposed the Affordable Care Act, ACA, a healthcare reform law that has expanded access to health insurance for millions of Americans. This opposition can have a negative impact on the health and well being of individuals and families, particularly those who are low income or have pre-existing conditions. Support for restrictions on abortion access. While the focus on abortion access is central to the pro-life movement, some advocates have supported restrictions that go beyond the prohibition of abortion itself. For example, some have supported laws that restrict access to contraception or mandate waiting periods before an abortion can be performed. These restrictions can make it difficult for women to access essential health care services and can have negative consequences for their health and well-being. Folk, nobody should dictate to a woman what to do. This should not be our business and concern whatsoever. They have to have the freedom that we all deserve. From a religious perspective, remember, everybody will be judged individually and by their personal and intimate actions. Pro-life. People should reflect on this. They are responsible only for their lives and thoughts not others. Environmental and foreign policies. Opposition to climate change mitigation efforts. Some pro-life advocates have opposed efforts to mitigate climate change, arguing that these efforts can have negative economic consequences. However, climate change poses significant threats to human health and well-being, including increased extreme weather events, rising sea levels, and the spread of infectious diseases. The real pro-life Candidates should stop all military actions, all military expansions and plans. They cost a huge amount of money for taxpayers and they do not reflect any pro-life sentiment or concept. So be pro-life by applying the constitutional concept of no foreign entanglements. By providing these concrete examples, the argument becomes more compelling and persuasive. It demonstrates that the pro-life Movement is often driven by political and economic interests that can conflict with its stated goals of protecting human life and promoting human flourishing. Folks, while some pro-life advocates may oppose abortion, they may also support policies that contribute to poverty, homelessness, and violence. These factors can have devastating consequences for individuals and families, and can even lead to the loss of life. A truly pro-life approach would require addressing these underlying issues through policies that promote economic justice, 
social equality, and health care accessibility. A truly pro-life candidate will fully support the Fair Tax Act H.25 proposal that will increase immediately and significantly people's financial stability, so kids are not a luxury anymore, as they are today. Why I am telling you this, in my example, in my case, I lost my job due to the corporate greed of a multi-billion dollar company and economic downturn caused by the 2008 financial crisis. I took a huge pay cut to find another job. I was on my spouse's health plan. I thought we were safe list we had benefits paid by her company. But in a few weeks the company she worked, after saving mid-double-digit millions of dollars by switching healthcare providers put on us the portion of healthcare plus pension, and immediately we started to lose $1,000 every month. Let's put it in perspective better while I took an entry-level low-paying job. We have to pay for benefits from now $1,000 per month. That's a loss of $12,000 in a year. While I am seeing and hearing in the news that the bailed-out company CEOs and the bailed-out bank supper management received for a so-called good job. Bonuses in multiple millions of dollars. All that money was a transfer of wealth from the working class to the few rich. I hope that my story highlights the real-life consequences of economic policies that prioritize crony capitalist corporate profits over human well-being and working-class families' prosperity. This is not a climate to form and support a family. Let's think and connect the dots. Why? The pro-life movement has often been associated with a particular economic ideology that prioritizes corporate profits over human well-being. This has led to the support of policies that benefit the wealthy at the expense of the poor and working class. Such policies can create a climate of economic insecurity and desperation, which can in turn lead to increased rates of crime, violence, and even suicide. They allowed the most recent wealth transfer from taxpayers, the working class to the rich, which happened three years ago. Please tell me, dear viewer, you do not see the severe decline of the economy in the past few years? Folks, the real pro-life candidates can reinstate with policies the concept of jobs with benefits, forcing companies to provide for the working class again, as they provided 20 years ago, remember? When jobs offered full benefits with no cost to the workers so they could use the extra money for their families. In conclusion, the pro-life movement has been hijacked by a narrow ideology that prioritizes the prohibition of abortion while neglecting the broader social and economic factors that impact human life. True pro-life advocates must recognize the interconnectedness of various issues and work to address the root causes of human suffering. Only by adopting a holistic approach that promotes economic justice, social equality, and healthcare accessibility can we truly protect and preserve human life at every stage. Please tell me what you think and how you feel about this issue, analyze it, brainstorm it, debate it, and if you like it, please share it. Thank you for watching. I truly and highly appreciate you, and God bless you.